our society is so broken. Mm -hmm. Our society is so broken. And I started really digging into it. As soon as we started abandoning God and faith and just having a moral sound purpose, a moral sound yeah. human being. Yeah. Like religion aside, the Bible is a good book to just be a good human. Like at the end of the day, like if you don't want to follow the religion part, you don't want to believe that there's a God out there. Yeah. We you have don't messed believe. it up, okay? That's what religion is. It's, it's our attempts to follow God. So, and we've gone to really great lengths to you know come up with our own versions of things yeah. that aren't even biblical yeah it's jesus it's very jesus simple. is spoken about in yeah. from the beginning of the bible to the end we believe that you are strong by design and you were made in god's image to have a strong body mind and spirit you're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world so let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. So we've covered a lot. We've talked a lot about just your backstory and your journey in fitness and bodybuilding and stuff. But in the last like year, uh, something else was kind of happening like in your life yeah. um and i don't know it, what was it that kind of stirred you to have more of like a, a relationship with god or just being open to that or feeling like that was had importance to, uh, you know in your life so it's uh, really interesting actually just this year and i did not grow up with any faith actually yeah. if anything i was class myself as atheist yeah is in my it's it's wild how this all kind of unfolded but i always said like well i believe in myself yeah. you know and yeah. i put all of it on me you know i got the job because i worked for the job i got the house because I, I saved for the house i you know i worked for the house i got the car because of this i i work I got, hard i work hard thus, and thus i re yeah. reward and um and you know i didn't grow up with faith either i still remember when faith was kind of like demonized i mean even heavily now so more so but i remember when it started in the 90s when i was a kid you know like people didn't have to stand for the pledge of allegiance anymore and sometimes there wasn't the pledge of allegiance and it was like one of those things where it's like um you know under god for which it stands and people are like i don't want to say under god like i remember that as a kid and hmm. just remembering the demonization of faith and, or removal um, of God from from yes the removal or, essentially or the, yes lacking a need yeah like we and can that be was our, my we generation can be our own God yes that was my generation yeah. was was that so fast forward now I'm a mom you know 33 and I turned 33 in January and I just had this like in the back I never let anybody know. Hmm. My background, I was like, God, I feel like something was pulling me. Something was calling me. And this is going to sound so cliche, but I promise you, like, I have messages with my friend back and forth. And I, when I finally said it out loud to somebody, and I didn't even say it, I wrote it. And um, I started 75 Hard Challenge within a year after my birthday. And part of 75 Hard was to read 10 pages a day hmm. of a book which I still continue now. I'm still reading, which is great. And honestly, 75 Heart is such a great program just yeah, to get you is. back on for, track. For, 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 for if, if nothing else, even if you don't complete it, you've established some type of positive, yes. hopefully habit. Yes. Yeah. And it was so good. So I had finished my book, which was um, David Goggins. I always mm. say if I was reincarnated as a man, I'd probably <laughs> David be, Goggins. Yeah, yeah, right. Like just that yeah. mindset mentality. Like yeah. It's all or nothing. Like yeah. just do it. You know, like stop messing around. So I finished his second book and um, I was looking for another book. I had started, um, was it The Art of Coaching or something of that nature? I can't think of what it's called. Conscious Coaching. Hmm. And Conscious Coaching basically, I mean, the few pages I got through, like the first 10 pages was like, you have passion in your process. You know, a lot of coaches talk in such a high tech terminology, they can't relate to their client. Maybe this is you or maybe blah, blah, blah. And it's like connecting the passion, the process. And I'm like, not to like toot my own horn, but like, I have passion, I have process. I can connect with people and I can coach them. Like I can give them scientific coaching, like programming, and I can still connect to them on a general gen pop level. So the, the, and I, I don't even know if that's what the book was about, but it wasn't sitting with me. Yeah. Like it wasn't resonating with it in the first like 10 pages I read. So I was like, just, I didn't have a pool to read it, but I had to check the box. I had to get my 10 pages in. So my friend, um, who I've known for a long time. She actually used to work at Blue Martini hmm. when I used to go back okay. in the day. Yeah, yeah. And um, she's a family now and stuff like that. She had posted this book and it was, you're not enough and that's okay. 
listen, give me a self-help book and I'm all in, right? So, um, because I'm forever trying, that's my Enneagram one. Enneagram ones, they always say the best, stop being an Enneagram one, stop looking for ways to fix yourself. Mm. And um, so I bought it. I didn't even, I did not read the summary or anything about this book. I went on Barnes and Nobles, I found it and I bought it for curbside pickup here in Clearwater. And I messaged her, I'm like, hey, thanks for posting that book. I just bought it. Um, I hope it's good. Good. I was like, I just, I was pull, looking for a book to read. And she goes, it's really good. It's basically saying like, you're not enough. And that's why you need God in your life. And God does fill those holes. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mind you, I had this in the back of my head. Like I did not tell her. I was like, yeah, that's not my cup of tea. I'm not really, I don't follow faith. I don't follow religion or anything like that. And I was like, ah, so I returned it. I went, I went to go pick it up and I go, look, I just want to make an exchange. And I bought the book that like is fantastic. The Comfort Crisis. You should read it. You would love it. Hmm. Every single person who's listening to this needs to go and buy The Comfort Crisis right now. But anyways, um, I returned it. I didn't read it. And so I let her know. I go, look, like, I don't want to be, I don't want you asking about the book and me telling you like, oh, by the way, I'm just gonna let you know up front. Me being the honest, very important person I am. She's like, that's okay. And then it just got me thinking. You know, and now, it, now the seed is planted. And it's like, God has his way of speaking to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and the Holy Holy Spirit has his way of speaking to you. And it's those moments. And now I'm thinking about this. Now it's top of my head. And I'm like, so I told her, I go, you know, I haven't told anybody else this. I go, but I have this feeling inside, like I kind of want to explore faith. You know, with everything going on in our world, the demonization of it, I go, if there's such great evil that has to be good too, right? And... You know, you, you can't watch. Have, you really can't have one without the other, right? You watch these things. Yeah. You know, for example, like recent stuff. You watch these things of grown adult men being naked in public with children around, and you're like, "That is not right." No. Like you know, like you can't watch that, yeah, and any part of your brain says right. that that is okay. Yeah, there's like, evil. There. It's evil, and you're like, like the fact that people are accepting of it is like wild. So then I go and I am very much so a thinker, as much of a talker as I am. I am I I think a lot all the time, and um, I start reflecting back. You know, with that they just had the mass shooting of the transgender person who mass shot in Ohio. And they came out to say, you know, like the person was struggling, this and that, and they are self-isolating. And, you know, I think um, I kind of, as I talked to Jared, because Jared's such a good person. Like, mm-hmm. he's really easy to talk to. And being a pastor, too, maybe that helps. But he has such a good foundation in his faith. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, well, the cross is meant, you know, the top and the bottom, you know, the vertical part of the cross is your connection with God. And the horizontal is the connection with the community. He's like, you know, faith isn't just about religion. I'm like, huh, okay. So I'm like thinking about that. Just like, just small phrases like that. I and mean, that was the end of the conversation, you know? And um, I started thinking about the struggles in our world and how a lot of them could be alleviated with faith. And these kids who are getting lost in today's world and they're trying to cling on to anything. Mm-hmm. And now more than ever in Western world, United States specifically, we have these children who are thinking they're born in the wrong bodies and they're mutilating their bodies. But then I'm also listening to the people who are on the other end of that who regret doing that. And, you know, that's very much in our face. And I'm watching these people struggle and I'm watching them suffer. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I went through that too when I was younger. You know, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. I changed my name to, I have two middle names when I was a kid. I, some people in my life only, only don't know me by Ashley. They know me by one middle name. Hmm. Some people in my life don't know me by Ashley. They only know me by my second middle name. They don't know me as, because every child, every adolescent, every teenager will go through that experience of being unsure of who they are as a person. You know, I mean, I went through my skater phase. And I had my Etni shoes and, you know, my puka shell necklace. And I went through my surfer phase and I wore the Bermuda shorts. I went through my preppy girl phase where I wear nothing but Lacoste shirts with a pearl necklace and khaki shorts. And, um, you know, I was able to explore that way and finding out who I was. And, but again, I had the good foundation at home too to kind of do that. I'm like, you know, every kid will have that situation where they feel like they have nothing to hold on to. Mm-hmm. And if, if anything outside of religion, just having that background for my daughter and having her have something to cling on to when she feels lost is worth it for me. So let me look into this. You know, like I had this feeling of like our society is very lost. And I think that if they had community, not this community, right. you know, so many people are here, 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 TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Yeah. But when they put this down and they look around, there's nobody around them. They have nobody. And that was a problem. And I'm like, you know, faith 
has people. There are people who care about you. There are people who check in on you. There are people who are praying for you. There are people who genuinely want to know who you are and they care about you. Like you have no, people don't care about anybody anymore. They could care less. People pull guns on people on the side of the street and there's a kid in the back of the car and they don't know. They're just shooting the passenger. Like it's crazy. People just have this lack of wanting, I don't, I'm missing the word, but they have this lack of just not wanting to care about another human life, mm. disregard for human life. So I'm like, you know, I reached out, I told my husband, I'm like, what do you think about going to church? And he was like, well, I mean, find one and we'll check it out. I go, you know, I go with everything going on in our society right now. You know, everybody's demonizing this and then blatantly worshiping Satan on TV. Huh. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is getting really bad. Um, and that pool in my heart, there's something inside me that's like, you need to do this. You need to do this, Ash. And um, so I just looked up a church, and our first day at church, our pastor was saying he held up two puzzles. And, you know, one was a cow, one was a pig. And they're all complete, the puzzle. It's like the little kid puzzle, the big box, mm-hmm. and there's a missing part. And there's a missing part. And he's like, you know, this is everybody. You're born with that missing piece. You find somebody, and you're like, hey, Mr. Cow, hey, Mr. Yeah. Pig. And they put them together, and you think they're going to fill that missing piece. Mm-hmm. But those pieces don't fit. Because a person can't fill the missing piece. That's right. The missing piece you can can't only... You can identify yourself by who you're with. And they, yeah. They're, they're not you. You're because not Because they're going to fail you. Because every that's person, right. if you put somebody on a pedestal that's not God, they're always going to fail you. That's right. And you can't hold somebody. It's it's almost irresponsible to do that. And it's not fair to that person either. Mm-hmm. You know, to look to somebody to save you. And um, it was weird that that was our first day at church. And he goes, every person has this empty piece inside of them. This void that they're trying to fill. And over the past year, you know, I I started acquiring things, materialistic things. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I got a nice car, and then I bought a nice handbag, and I bought this, and it was that. And, and this like, will fill the gap, and this, this will fill yeah, the gap, and, it and this will make me happy, and this will, yeah. And it never did, and yeah. that was it, too. It's like, I'm seeking this happiness in external things, and, like, I have this pull that I'm ignoring in my heart. So I messaged my friend, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just going to, like, tell you this. I don't know why I told her. Mm-hmm. I don't know why God let me see her story on Instagram that day of that book. I don't know what led me. I mean, I do know what led me now to down that road. But, um, and she goes, you know, she's like, I'm a Christian. She's like, I, you know, Christians lose their faith here and there. They don't pray as often as they should. They don't attend church as much as they should. She goes, and, you know, everybody struggles with their faith at some time. That's right. She's like, and that's okay. And she was just a really good, like, person to talk to about this. Because we don't have, other than shooting photographs of Kyle and I over the years like I don't really have much of a connection with her but for some reason God put her in my life not for some reason he knew what he was doing you know mm-hmm. he knew that I needed that person that didn't yeah. ha- that couldn't judge me that didn't have any sort of like first hand attachment to me mm-hmm. to talk to other people that I hang out with mm-hmm. it was like just a safe space for me to like talk to about like these feelings I was having and uh, she was so supportive and I told him like so we're gonna go to church and she's like really and I'm like I think we are so long story short every single Sunday after that the message Kyle was like is that weird like because he would watch from work so he can only go to church me every other Sunday because he works every other Sunday yeah. but he watches from work and he puts his mm-hmm. AirPod in and he can listen when he can when he, they're not busy if they're busy he can't you know it's just it is what it is but he'd be like are you he's like it's weird that they're having this conversation right and I'm like what I'm like ours hasn't started yet you know our our stream of our pastor and they dad was like wow I'm like you know there's no coincidences at this point that was it for me that was it that was like our fourth weekend I'm like, every single week, there's no coincidences. It was like Alexa was in my house and Pastor Ann was on Alexa listening to what our problems were, what our discussions were in our home, and then that following Sunday, having a message about it. Excerpt right out of passage and just reading it and talking to us about it. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, this is crazy. You know, like exactly what we needed at the exact time, yeah. exactly like what God was just speaking to us. Yeah. And was like, I know you're dealing with this right now, and this is what we're going to talk about. And I want your faith to be so strong. And he just like roped us in. It was literally four weeks in. And I remember a text uh-huh. I go, there are no coincidences. No, there are no coincidences at this point. Like, this is God speaking to us. Yeah. Like, he knows that we're like testing the waters and we're not really sure. And I'm like, still unsure about this faith thing. And, but as we're going and we're going and suddenly we're passing by a cemetery and my daughter's like, I see Jesus, mommy. <laughs> yeah. And she is just like every, she, mommy, Jesus is alive. She tells mommy, Jesus is alive. And I'm like, where is she getting this from? Because we don't huh. talk about this, you know? And, um, it's just, it's wild how kind of it started and how it's growing. And now I'm in a church group and, 
you know, I'm learning. I, it's hard for people to understand when I say I don't have any sort of faith background. Like I don't, I don't even know how to pray. Right. And I'm like, how do I pray? A lot of people, listen, I've been <laughs> part of a church since I can remember. I was baptized in the church that my, my parents were going to and grew up in church and have people who I know I haven't seen in years who I could call and they would like come help me if I needed it. You know, um, we are just as broken as anybody else. We're all human beings and we all need something that carries that burden, that yeah. heavy burden that we all bear. And that's what, that's what God does. That's what, what she, that's what the word of God does in our lives. And, um, and, and the, 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 the truth that comes through the Bible that's spoken every week at church does seem to have a way of just hitting you at the right moment, at the right time, in the right situation, right? The it's like way, the Holy Spirit the, speaks to you. And there's some the days way that... it's applicable. Yeah, yeah, some days I go to church and I'm like, this message doesn't apply to me, but it applies to somebody in my life that I can share it with. That's right. Like, this doesn't really apply to me this week. I'm, I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying, but like, it doesn't apply... But it apply gives to me a new perspective on something that and maybe And then I, I can always share the Word of else. God with somebody else, yeah. you know? And that's like the best part about faith is sharing sharing with other people and it's not preaching mm -hmm. to them it's like hey offering them a hand so back to like the start it was i reflected on all these people who are suffering and doing these atrocities and i'm like how much of that could have been prevented if they had some sort of faith and something bigger than them mm -hmm. they had something to hold on to to not go and kill innocent people and then kill themselves mm -hmm. like they said you know even though i feel like i'm at rock bottom i still have god in my back pocket like he's always there he's always somebody you can talk to you know and i thought about my own daughter, you know, and growing up. And I mean, I was Baker's acted. So I hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. I tried to kill myself. And had I had faith, maybe I wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I wouldn't have felt like everything in the world was against me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I wouldn't have felt that, you know, the journey that I was on and the trials and tribulations I was going through weren't trying to teach me something, which is what God does. And I needed to see it through to the end that it was just like, life is unfair and I need to end my life right now. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I have nothing left to hang on to. My sister didn't answer the phone. I called my sister before I tried to kill myself and she didn't answer. And I felt like I had nobody else in this world. Hmm. And that was it. And I reflected back, especially on Ohio and that really hit home. You know, those, hmm. the kids, you know, and I'm probably going to homeschool my daughter for this reason, but it was just like, our society is so broken. Hmm. Our society is so broken. And I started really digging into it. As soon as we started abandoning God and faith and just having a moral sound purpose a so moral sound yeah. human being yeah. like religion aside the bible is a good book to just be a good human like at the end of the day like if you don't want to follow the religion part you don't want to believe that there's a god out there yeah. we you have don't messed believe. it up okay that's what religion is it's it's our attempts to follow god so and we've gone to really great lengths to you know come up with our own versions of things yeah. that aren't even biblical yeah it's jesus it's very jesus simple. is spoken about in yeah. from the beginning of the bible to the end yeah right and if you and no i don't think anybody can debate that jesus wasn't <laughs> an amazing man an extraordinary man and his teachings are unbelievable I and think it's good for any human. And like, the way he taught and, and his yeah. truths and parables and things for like, they're almost like we have to f experience these, ex these parables to really understand the truth that that's hidden in them. Yeah. And that's, that's what's so great about the Bible is every time you pick it up and read it, no matter where you are, it's a new perspective. It's a new thing that you get from it. I reached to it evergreen. now, like last week I, I told you, I was, it's hard for me to get mad at my husband, but I get frustrated with him sometimes. Sure. But last week, I was actually really mad at him. I was like, genuinely, I did not like the feelings I was having towards him. And I picked up my Bible. Mm -hmm. And I just started, I have a um, div I have a devotional journal. And in the front of it, it has like, if you're feeling this way, here are mm -hmm. um, different, um, what is it called? Parts that you can read. Like... Oh, you mean scripture? Pieces yeah, scripture. Of, thank parts you. Parts of scripture. Yeah. Parts of scripture. It's like if you are feeling frustrated, yeah, here's yeah, parts of yeah, scripture. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. need grace, right. and I needed grace for my husband, mm -hmm. you need to read this part of scripture. And I literally just started. Like he, I dropped my daughter off at the bowling alley with him. And I'm like, I need time mm -hmm. 
I need God to speak to me right now because I'm feeling some feelings I don't want to feel. And they just started reading the scripture. And I was like, this is what I need. I need God to talk to me. And I, you know, and back to the religion thing that you said, um, we've had Phil and pastors, our pastors away on sabbatical for the last month. We had one that I'll always remember this for the rest of my life. He said, the quickest way to create an atheist is practice religion. Hmm. You need to practice faith. It's community. It's faith. It's having. It's more than just religion. It's more than standing up, sitting down, doing the processes. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, like, that's yeah. that's the quickest way to create atheists. Pra- yeah. Practice religion. Go to church only on Sundays. Don't talk about God Monday through Saturday. Right, right, right. Don't pray Monday through Saturday. Only pray when things happen after the fact. Right. Your aunt is sick and now you're praying to God because now you need God's miracle to heal, heal your aunt versus you should have been praying for your aunt's health mm-hmm. before she got sick. Like stop reaching to God before like, you know. Mm-hmm. And, no, it should um, be a daily practice and maybe even multiple times a day. Our pastor said it this way. Yeah. He goes, are you, are you, are you following, are you following Jesus for his presence or are you following him for his miracles? Are you just waiting for a miracle? Are you are you actually there because you want his presence? Mm. Are you there just waiting for him to pr- perform miracles for you? Because mm. if you're there just waiting for him to perform miracles for you, you know, he was talking about the 40-year trek, and he gave him the option. He goes, look, I will give you your destination, but I'm not coming with you. And, I mean, he could have made it to is it Israel from Egypt. You're talking about Moses? Yeah, and mm-hmm. he's like, you could have the Holy Land, but I'm not going to be there with you. And he said no. And he never made it. He said, I want your presence. I don't want that. I want you here with me because that is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And that really hit home for me too. It's like, are you praying because you just want miracles? Are you praying because you want the presence of Jesus in your heart, in your home? Mm -hmm. I want the presence of Jesus with my daughter. I want the presence of Jesus when I'm reading my Bible. Mm -hmm. And I've learned through my prayer group that the way that God talks to you is by reading. You need to read because you can always talk to him, but how are you going to listen if you're not reading his word? So like that was a really important thing for me and maybe somebody who's learning to explore faith is listening to this and they're in that pretty, I mean, I was reading a book, Chris, that said it was um, a scoop of honey or something like that. And it said from a girl who once Googled Jesus or once Googled God. And I'm like, oh my God, that's me. Like I'm Googling like, What's the difference between Jesus and God? Like, it's so, like, yeah. I'm telling you, I was that I ignorant. There's a lot of people, but there's a lot of people like this, Ashley. There's people that, that would call themselves Christians who don't properly know how to define things or articulate things or And I'm still or, learning or to this pray. day. Yeah, and, so. And prayer, guess what prayer is? Just talking. Just it's, having a conversation. It's, it's nothing but just convert, yeah. it, like having a conversation with your creator that's yeah. all it is and it could be this it could be this simple dear god thank you for this day yeah i'm so grateful for the people in my life i'm so grateful for the work that i get to do i'm so grateful for the community i live in i'm so grateful for this that or the other thank you for all my blessings i'm not even deserving of any of them yeah but thank you amen and i mean that- and, and and that can be a prayer and you can that can be a, a gratitude prayer yeah, you're not praying for anything. You're yeah. you're you're showing praise for yeah. things. I think about I, that. Uh, oftentimes, that's how my all my prayers begin. I'm grateful for the job I have, the people in my life, my wife, my children, the yep. community I live in, my neighborhood, all of these things. And I wouldn't want any of those things to change. Yeah. Right. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to touch people and reach people in a way that if it if it makes one person's life better. Yeah then it was worth it, right? Yep. And so that's the culture that we've created here, Critical Bench, and we hope that people feel that, you know, when yeah. they come in the building. And I think, obviously, that's a contributor, right? You've yeah. felt like, wow, these people really care. Like, what's and different? That was one thing, these too, people are like different. Having, right? you know, and as I'm exploring this, obviously, the next person I told was Jared, and right. then you, right. you know, like both of you guys. And then I got baptized, like, you know, I was right. like, here we go, we're going right. all in, this is it. Yeah. And having, you know, realizing that, one, I have support of Critical Bench behind me, you know, like having you to talk to and having Mike to talk to and having, Man, look you at know, Frank. Uh, yeah, exactly. And look it's just like, change, and what's crazy you know? is when I told, because Jared was the second person I told, and he goes, so I knew this was going to happen. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I told Christiana last month, I think Ashley, Ashley's, she's there. And I was like, what do you, I didn't give any hints. He goes, she's there. And he looked at me, he's like, I knew. He's like, it's, he's like, I promise you can ask Christiana. I told her that you're here, that this is going to happen. And he 
knew it. Maybe they were praying for me. He spoke it into existence. He has a connection right. with God that I maybe not have yet, but right. you know, some people have that connection with God, and they can. Mm. Um, and one of the girls in my um, my church group. So our church is great because they have groups, which create community, sure, which is sure, fantastic. Sure. Yeah, you have to. Have she it. said her sister's like that. She pray. She dreams of something. She wakes up. She goes, "Are you okay?" And she was going through some issues with her husband, like really serious stuff. And she's like, she's crying, but she's her sister doesn't know. And she's like, "Yeah, I'm okay." And she's like, "I had a dream that you're not okay, and God told me to call you." Hmm. And she was like, it's so weird. Her sister always knows. Like, she either dreams about it, she has this feeling, and instantly she knows something's going on. Like, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. speaks through her. And I'm like, I need this. And they're like, it'll come. You're just new to it. Like, I'm here. I am trying to, like, I'm like, I'm all in. Holy Spirit, talk to me. You know? <laughs> but then I, after this, this is our last Thursday talking, and they're like, it could be as simple as, like, I never give money to homeless people. I don't. I give them food or I give them water. I always mm -hmm. carry bottles of water. Yeah. I carry some food. I'm always like, if I always, ha I always have snacks on me, I will give you my food because mm -hmm. I know I have food at home. Right. Um, but this, this two Sundays ago, this lady just sitting outside the gas station. I'm dressed like, like a, a homeless person. Like literally, I'm wearing like a raggedy shirt, some shorts. I just went to get a Celsius, and she's like, I like your outfit, and I'm like. God, <laughs> I'm like, God, that's weird. So, yeah, I say this to myself. I'm like, thanks. And I walk inside. It's something inside me. Like I should get something for him. I gave her money, yeah. you know. I was, I didn't buy her anything inside. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I never have cash on me. I gave her $2 in my wallet. I'm like, here you go. She goes, God bless you. And I, um, I say, you know, lean on God when you need to. And after I said that, I had this, like, wave of, like, almost guilt. I was like, why did I say when you need to? You know, like always, like you like pray to God, you know, mm -hmm. reach out to him. He's there for you, not like when you need to, right? And like I thought about that. And my my church group was like, well, that's the Holy Spirit telling you, like, you know, like they knew you, you needed to help. But then, you know, on top of that guilt is you. But it was one of those things like that's it. It's very subtle. You're not going to know it when it happens sometimes that's until right. you learn to recognize that's, it. Listen, that's, again, it, 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 Life is about learning, right? Mm -hmm. About learning and growing, becoming different people. We can't just be the people that we were when we were 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. I would hope that we all have aspirations to be, how can we be better? Yeah. How can we be kinder? How yes. can we be better listeners? All these things. And I have, a far, I have far to go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a long way to go. But the only way that things are really going to hit home is when we experience them. Yeah. And I they're think, not just words on a page anymore. Yes. And that's what makes like the parables and the words and of scripture really come to life is when we feel them mm -hmm. in our experiences. And then we can marry those things together and be like, oh, that's it. Like, that's what that means. That's I feel what like it it's means like a, for me. a hard part of my personality because as we've been talking over the last hour, you know, I like to become an expert in things I don't know. Yeah, right. That's and right. this is one thing that I'm going to have to learn that I will never be an expert no, in. And it's right. not something I can just Google and it's not something I can just read about. And I can't just go and read the Bible and be an expert in the Bible. And no. I think that that's like, for me, it's going to be a very learning part of my life. And this is a mm -hmm. whole new chapter of my life yeah. I just opened was that I just spent the whole last hour saying like, I am determined. If I don't know something, I'm going to know it. That's right. If I, in that's one of those things that it's like, I have to slow down. It's like, God wants you to slow down. He wants you to be present. He needs you to be here right now. And uh, in my last part of my book, The Comfort Crisis, the guy goes and he talks to um, this llama in, in Bhutan. And Bhutan is one of, one of the most happiest places on earth. They actually invest in gross domestic happiness, not gross domestic product, because money doesn't lead to happiness. Right. Their government invests in the happiness of the people. So he's talking to him about this, uh, the llama who works at the hospital, and he focuses on death. Like, his whole thing is about death. And this kind of, like, relates to, like, faith, too, because they say, you know, like, you don't fear death, you know? Like, and I, like, every American has this fear of death, mm. you know? So, like, I feel like all religion really ties in very close together. I study world religion. So, like, that's, like, again, the science part of my background, the political science part of my background, yeah. international part of my background. I'm like, people who say there's not a God, every single person on this planet worships a God. So, for yeah. you to think that yeah, right. there's nothing on this planet, that it, like, you're crazy. Like, there are people in every single country that worship a God. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you can't sit there and say that there's not a God. Like, you're going to tell these billions of people they're wrong? 
Right. Eh, I don't know. So when he's back to the book, he goes, the lawmaker goes to say, you know, in American lifestyle, we fear death. And the number one reason being is that we feel like we don't have enough time. You know, because we live this checklist lifestyle. That's right. Once I get the house, I'm going to get the bigger house. Right. Once I pay off this car, I'm going to go get a better car. Once I get this promotion, I'm going to go and do this. That's and right. once I do this, I'm going to do this. When so, this happens, I can do this. When exactly. this happens, right, And it's it like never ending, and it's our That's whole correct. life. That's correct. And he said, versus, you know, again, this, and I, I really, really, I, a lot of things make ties in my brain. I have really bad ADHD. I'm working in five different ways in one part. Mm. So if you're still hanging on this podcast, thank you. But, um, is that I connect those things to, okay, well, spending time in God's presence, right? Right now, instead of in the future, stop like waiting for his, stop mm. waiting for his, his power. And, you know, we have an amazing God and our God can do amazing things and supernatural things. Right. And he has, and he has the ability to do it if you ask. That's right. Most people don't ask because they don't believe that he can do miracles That's our correct. god does miracles you just have to ask him for the miracle and it's so like not, so many it's people it's not the way that we think so yeah it's not it's not going to be the way you think it's going to happen That's right. but stop asking for the miracle and looking forward to the miracle so as i'm processing this and this is in bhutan they're not a christian community i think buddhists if anything lamas right. but um he goes you know like be soak in the presence right now like stop living for something Tomorrow. else yeah. you know be in the presence so again be in the presence of jesus be in the presence right now like be happy with what you have right now look around like you said in prayer look around what do you have right now what can you be thankful mm. for what can you make better in your life right now mm-hmm. And, you know, I was reflecting back on that. And we want to buy a house. The market's just not here for us. We missed our window. We got bad advice and not here nor there. But God has a plan. That's right. Again, you know, waiting for the miracle, God. We missed this window. Patience. But patience. patience. It's a big part so of it. It's a huge part of it. Living in the presence of patience, too. Living mm-hmm. in the presence of patience with God. I know. And understanding that he's going to work. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go gardening. So I have this huge slab in my backyard. I'm like, what can I do now? I need to be in the presence now. I need to be in the presence of God right now. I need the presence of my family right now. I need to stop worrying about the future, about Kyle getting a promotion so we can pay off some debt for Kyle get a promotion so we can buy a house mm-hmm. for this to happen so this can happen. Like I need to just be here right now. Yeah. And it all finds a way of funneling itself into it this does. little thing into my life where I'm like, whether it's reading about Bhutan and these lamas talking about death and sitting in church on Sunday and saying, stop looking for God's miracles and start looking for his presence, mm. you know? And it's just, I love it. It's taken over a, a big part of my life. And, yeah. um, I have to be okay with resting and not being an expert in this. I think yeah. that's it. Like, you know, we spent that last hour again, like I said, talking about me becoming an expert in anything that I, I dive into. Yes. And this is one of those things I can't just Google. Yeah. Like I have to just, I have to, I have to understand. I have to sit back. I have to listen. I have to you, sit. You just got to be okay with being a student forever. Yes. In, in that capacity. Yeah. And I, I'm the same way. Um, I, I like to think that I can reach a level of expert or expertise on certain things. But when it comes to uh, growing as a human being and being a more loving, kinder, uh, uh, gentler you know, better husband, better father, better friend, all of these things. That's just, it's, it's a forever thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not something I'm going to achieve tomorrow or by next month or by next year. It's, it's a lifelong process. It's a lifelong adventure. And I, I, I think, and I've, I've, I've come more to terms as I've gotten older with enjoying the journey that you're on mm-hmm. because all of us have a destination that we're going to reach, but don't be so so charged up and so quick to get there to yeah. the end. Don't we want to think about those feelings when you're reading a really good book and then that feeling when the book's over, yeah. there's a sadness that hits it. Yeah. That, oh my gosh, the story is, is over. Yes. Like I got to the end, but you couldn't wait to get there. Like you yeah. were enjoying that, picking that book up every time. It's like a, a mini series that you watch or a movie, mm-hmm. you know, a movie or, you know, you're really enjoying the ride. And I think if we just enjoyed the day yes. and just enjoyed the present um, and like that, What's that long, uh, that long pro- prose poem called "The Present"? Okay, and 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 that that's the the basis of it is live in the now, yeah. Enjoy the the, the present, the, this gift that we have called life. And if we're always thinking about yesterday and always looking to tomorrow, we're forgetting about today. Yeah, and that can be 
a dangerous place yeah. and an unhealthy place to, to be. So, it, and it, we have to constantly remind ourselves though of this. This is not something that like for me clicks every mo- every minute. Yeah. I have to kind of reset myself and be like, dude, just take a breath. Yeah. Enjoy what you got. It's yeah. right in front of you. Yeah. Live, live for right now. Tomorrow will take care of itself. And you're not guaranteed it anyway. You're not. So. And that's the scary part. It's like in the book, he says, you know, at any point you could die. At any point. Like, but you have to be okay with like living a fulfilled life that, you know, when you get to that point, you're just like, okay. Like my grandma, when she passed away, she passed away, unfortunately, not on her terms. But she was at a point where she's just like, you know, I can die now. I know her kids are healthy grandkids she's yeah, just like there's a piece there's a piece you know yeah. like my dad's dad he passed away you know probably what 20 years ago at this point now so at that point you know maybe 15 12 years before that and uh she just had a piece of life you know she lived she had five healthy kids and just like there wasn't like anything where she's just like i need more time or i need more time or you know i spent every other sunday with her leading mm-hmm. up to that point too so it's not like i had this heartbreak of God, I wish I would have spent more time with her because I spent every other Sunday leading up to the accident that happened. You know, I was supposed to go see her that Sunday. So that was hard for me. You know, the expectation of going to see her and mm. just not having her every other Sunday to like listen to the same story for the hundredth time sure. over again that she forgot she told me, but she enjoyed telling me. So I listened to it like it was the first. Sure. Um, or, you know, sharing cookies with her, those little like just those moments. But um, like for, ex- for that example, it was like she was wildly catholic she had a heavy faith very big faith she had a catholic you know my dad grew up catholic and mm. it's nice to have my dad in my back pocket even though he doesn't follow faith anymore my dad knows like catholicism like religion like to a t i can ask him why did this person do this or why does it say this or i don't understand what happened between you know like this and this or what's the history and my dad knows because he went through catholic school his entire life hmm. and he knows but again uh, this goes to say with religion, you know, you practice religion so heavily, like you end up. It's about relationship. That's the it thing. It really it's, is. It's not about what you know and. You can know it all, but if you don't have the relationship, about, you don't have the it's faith, about you a don't relationship have. Yes. Is all it is. And it's that's not all, checking the box. No, that's all Jesus wanted. Yeah. He just wanted a relationship, and that's what he wants for us. And community and reaching out and just being with each other. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of today's problems could be solved with having that faith of course it could be and just that community and people not feeling alone and having connection with each other and like having a bible group on thursdays we don't talk about the bible we talk about right now we're talking about prayer but it could be like anything in prayer you know our other guest pastor he's like how many of you guys think of god you think of a judge he puts on a judge outfit and he has a hammer Mm -hmm. he's like i grew up thinking god was a judge and he was ready to hammer down on me Mm -hmm. at any point Mm -hmm. like damned you you're not going to heaven he goes but you have to change the way you think about god he was like god is your father he goes and he takes the judge off it off he puts a robe on how she's on he's like your father like you like and i that really hit home for me because i talked to my dad probably 10 times a day yeah. my dad's my best friend he's like having a conversation with your father you know you just reach out to him talk to him anytime you need to and just keep that open communication it doesn't have to be this formal sense of like prayer mm-hmm. or this formal sense of communication mm-hmm. dear heavenly father i'm blessed today for xyz it could be like Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything. Yeah. Like, I was talking to him last night before I went to bed. I was like, you know, please walk with my daughter through mm-hmm. her life and just support her and, you know, watch over my dad as he travels back to Texas. You know, I know you're always with him, even though he's not following you with now. I know you're here. And it was mm-hmm. just a conversation I mm-hmm. had versus, like, the very structured. And I'm learning that yeah. as I grow in my faith. Yeah. You would ask me this a month ago, and I'd be like your heavenly father please provide protection nah, like i felt like it was such a like yeah. a, a um this certain, performance yeah, right and they say words, when it becomes performance you know. it's like you you don't you're not you're not speaking from the heart that's right it shouldn't be performance god knows god knows your heart anyway yes um, he knows that little voice that's in your head while you're praying saying are, is this the right prayer? Yes. Are these the right words? Yeah. He he's hearing all of it. Yeah. He understands. The best thing to do is just to be completely honest yeah. and just be totally vulnerable and exposed. Yeah. And just put it out there and say anything that comes to mind, whatever it is. So my friend um, told me this, the friend that I mentioned six months ago. I go, I go, this is gonna sound weird, I don't know how to pray. She goes, I just talk to God all the time. She's like, I'll be in my car and be like, wasn't that funny? 
And like, oh my God, God, do you do you see what's going on right now? Please give me the faith and the strength to get through this traffic right now without losing my mind that yeah. my daughter's screaming in the back of the car. Like, please give me the strength to get through this. Yeah. I love you so much. She's like, I'm just driving, talking to God. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I couldn't get it past my head that it was that simple. Like, I literally couldn't get it past my head that it wasn't this performance process driven yeah, that a lot a of people think religion is no. or faith. And like, again, that's interchangeable. Like, I don't practice religion. I practice faith. That's right. You know, and I tell people, I'm like, I had this such this one-sided view that it was like very structured. It was very religious. So when she told me she just had a conversation with God, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I don't understand. What do you like? A con She's like, yeah, just like matter of fact, like I'm driving to traffic. My mm -hmm. daughter's screaming in the background because she threw a passy and there's traffic. And I'm just like, please give me the strength. God, do you see what's going on right now? I need you to work some miracles right now. I need you <laughs> to give me some patience breathe life through me so I can get this traffic and get home and give my daughter a hug and give her her passy. And she's like, it's that easy. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. What do you mean it's that easy? Like she probably didn't understand why I didn't understand. But in my mind, as somebody who doesn't never followed faith, never understood it, I had this one track mind, which I still have this conversation with people in my life who don't follow faith. They think of it as what I did, religion has to be religion it has to be structured it has to be like right and wrong yes and no you're condemned you're saved you're this you're that it's like it's like they think it's so but it's really and i'm like please just come to my church i promise it's not that way they're not ready yet i'll keep inviting them maybe one day they will come That's it. and they'll have that calling you know and it's not my place to say what that calling is yeah. um the last thing i'll leave on it was whenever i told you you told me that jesus died at 33 years old like he was a living person and i Again, there are no coincidences that the year that I turned 33 was the year that I found Jesus too. Mm -hmm. And I found God and I discovered faith. And I was like, I feel like this is the Holy Spirit saying, look, Ashley, like this speaking through me, speaking life into me. Um, so again, I have a long way to go. But I think that um, if people are struggling in their lives to just church shop, you know. Just explore it and be open to it. Just be open it, to it. Know, I because mean, there's... I can only speak from my experience, obviously, right? But there's always been a gap or a, or a, a part of me that always felt like this can only be filled by by God, by a Creator, because it's it's nothing that material things can fill or another person can fill. Yeah. Um. And the only thing that explains it is the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And it would be a very scary world to live in to think that there is no God. Yeah. And to me, it wouldn't make any sense. It really doesn't. It wouldn't make any sense that there's not something behind all of this that would explain it. And that's, I think, man's endless search is for meaning and purpose and where yeah. we come from and our creator and all of these things. And I think these are all very real and healthy feelings to have. But the only thing for me that really does a good job of explaining any of it. Yeah. For me, for as a, God. not somebody who's always had that, um, the way it makes it easier for me to understand is that there's evil in this world and the way it's put to me is that if you know if the devil can't have your faith he'll take your purpose hmm. you know and how many people know don't have faith but they take their purpose because they're on tiktok they're doing stuff that's questionable and you're hmm. like but is that really like so in my perspective you know like can't yeah, my faith it's strong but my purpose is my daughter but how attached am i to my phone you know, like evil is always there. And oh, there's yeah. a lot of people who try to come at me and say, well, if God exists, why did Sandy Hook happen? If God exists, why did Ohio happen? If God right. existed, why did this happen? I go, don't judge God's greatness and his ability to make an impact on people who've already given into evil. That's right. You know, if you do not follow God, he it's not that he wasn't trying to protect children, but God cannot overcome somebody who has evil in their heart and in their mind. He's given He's, us free will. Listen, he, yeah, we have as much ability to love him and to show love to others as we do to ignore him and show hate to others. Well, yeah, He's and let, they, us that and let evil come in. And evil is always trying to come in your back door every single second of the day. Yeah. They're trying to deter you. They're trying to throw you off. The road rage on the road. Evil's trying to get in my ear. Listen, Ashley, get out of your car. Go mom. Mm -hmm. No, like you have to have. And that's why I, you know, I had this conversation the other day. I go, don't confuse God's greatness and his ability to do great things with the power of evil. Evil is just as powerful as God is, unfortunately, if you do not accept 
that faith in your life, if you close God out, evil will take over you. Mm -hmm. And you will go down the wrong path all the time because you don't have that purpose and you don't have the faith. You don't have that higher power that you know, you're know you answering to and you're looking to and who does do miracles every single day mm -hmm. because now evil is taken over you. And it's one or the other. And that's why I said, I go, if you choose not to believe in God and you want to believe in the evil, that's your personal choice at the end of the day. But you can't say that with great evil and those atrocities that are happening, that great good evil can't exist that's right you can't say only evil exists it it does and it 100 percent does and it's trying it's um one of the other pastors i was um that was pastoring us over the past month she said you know like what we're going through right now in our current times is not a flesh on flesh war it's a spiritual war it is and people need to start praying you need to accept god and bring god into your lives and try to have other people bring god into their lives as well it's a spiritual war and evil's trying and working over time to take these i mean you look at hollywood mm. and you're like oh my gosh like blatant satanic worships on tv yes, and i'm like I know, I you know. can't acknowledge that that's that's like oh you're just going to over no guys come on like we know right from wrong like generally you know right from wrong when men are dressing up as women and going into chill into bathrooms with women with an erect yeah, yeah, male yeah. parts yeah, yeah, yeah. and video recording women it's, it's a frightening thing to even evil, consider as but a, it, especially as a parent but right from wrong we do that's know right. right from wrong yes we do and you can't physically watch something that and say that it's okay that's right right and you know that they're is trying evil. the the they're trying to make it okay they're trying to evil is trying to tell them that it's okay agenda yeah and and make it you know and at shroud, the end, you're shrouded like, in it's but all, it's not it's okay. Good. Like not it doesn't okay. matter where you stand. That's not okay. It's a it's a it's a it's a interesting time that we that we're living in where the the boldness is just so working overtime. It's, it's just it's in our face. In your face. Yeah. In your face. And all the time. so all we can do is be vocal on our on our side that standing up for what is right and and talking about the things that are wrong. Yeah. In a way that can be. Uh, heard yeah um That's and, and it's hard to do it's hard to put a, put aside your frustrations and your anger and speak you know gentler and more loving yeah but sometimes you have to kind of you have to take a stand too well, on the opposite side uh, of that is that the pendulum has swung so far one way that um on social media the other day um the bucks player whose two-year-old daughter drowned you know that story earlier this year oh yes him and his it's, wife they have a that she was the fourth child and she just celebrated her second birthday and the only reason i know about it is because i have a two-year-old yeah and my client had told me and i was like heart wrenched over this like i could not imagine in my no. wild strange looking at I my daughter know. i'm like loving her so much and like having that i know it's an accident and it happened and somebody you know just made a passive comment was like well should the parents really be having another kid until they find out why their first one died and i'm like well she oh, drowned it's goodness. an accident and they go well the parents should be held accountable in that situation and i go what do you mean they should be held accountable and i'm like they're already punished enough. They lost a child, so there's a point to the story. They lost a child, like that's enough punishment. Like, first of all, drowning can happen in 20 seconds to a child in half a cup of water. Oh my gosh. Half yeah. a cup of water in 20 seconds. That's I know. how fast it is. I go, it took you more than 20 seconds to read my response back to you. To so open up the comment, click on my comment and read it. In 20 seconds, don't tell me you're not on your phone with your children around. Do not tell me you are not on your phone with your children around. In that 20 seconds, your child could have died. And somebody was like, you keep saying 20 seconds, 20 seconds. You know, this is what's wrong with our society. We need accountability. People need to be held accountable, this and that. And the pendulum swung so far to the right. And that's why I said, I go, or so far to the left, I go, now here's the problem. You are the pendulum swinging so far to the right. I go, where's humanity in the middle of this? Is you can't go so far left where you are having a male with an erectile I'm sure, yeah. male right. partner walking to the restaurant that's so far left to the point that you are so inhumane that you're saying parents who lost a child should be held accountable and this is what's wrong in our society is that we're going too easy on people we're not holding people accountable and we're hiding behind excuses I go you are the opposite like you're getting mad about the pendulum being on the left but look at what you just said you are the pendulum on the right like you like I'm very fearful What's because they say once it swings so far, it yeah. will swing so far yeah, the other way. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't, and I already start to see it. Like, these people are so aggressive. I'm like, you can't sit here and say that you're a faith-based person, but you're sitting there saying you need harsh accountability for a parent who lost a child. That, like, you're, I make it, that I, as just a commenter on a post, 
I'm making excuses for them. I go, at the end of the day, a child's life was lost. I go, you need to have some sort of like compassion for the parents. Do you think that they intentionally did it? Guess what? I hope you're a perfect parent. I hope you never take your eyes off your child. And I hope that no unfortunate accidents can happen mm. to you because they can happen to anybody. Oh, I've seen my own children, both my son and my daughter. You told me the nearly, story. Nearly drown multiple times. Yeah. At parties, functions where there's lots of go yes. things going on, and it happens quickly and silently. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I said. They're like, well, if they had a pool, they should have measures around. No, First of all, if a child are, walks out the door and closes the door, yeah. they have a big it's, house. The walk, the doors close. Okay, they're probably not outside. The doors closed. Let me look upstairs. Little did I know, you know, child jumped, fell in the water, was chasing something, for, like whatever might have happened. My nephew is nonverbal autistic. He ended up five blocks away from their house because he let Gracie out, which he always does every single day. Their dog, this is a few years ago, she's since passed away, let her out and the side fence was open because the lawn guy was there earlier that day and um, Gracie got out the lawn. So he was like, oh no, he doesn't talk. So he's chasing Gracie, trying to get her back. My goodness. Yeah. Ends up five blocks away. Cops are called because he's nonverbal autistic. And somebody recognizes, like, oh, I know that kid. Like, he lives over here. My best friend calls me crying. I'm crying for her. And she's, like, mortified. Like, it was it happened so fast. Yeah. You know, they're, she's upstairs playing with Gigi. Gavin's just going to let Gracie outside to go potty. Doesn't realize, like, and it's, like, yeah. and actually, the baby, was babysitter was there. She was at an event with a girlfriend. So the babysitter was, like, crying her eyes out. And it just happened so fast. So fast yeah. in the blink of an and, eye. And all we, we can't, the, the trouble is we are very judgmental. Yes. And not compassionate. And that's what's wrong with society right now. Yes. It's like, and I think that, again, people who, when you lean into faith, you need to not just go to church on Sunday. It has to be prayer daily. It has to be practicing the way. It has to be letting God speak to you too. Mm -hmm. And when you are feeling those ways, like I felt about my husband, is looking at the scripture for grace. And be like, look, I'm feeling this way and I'm feeling very judgmental. I'm feeling very angry, whatever it might be. And saying, what God, tell me what I need to, like, how do I need to handle this right now? Mm. What's the way? Because right now, as a human, I understand that my feelings and what I'm speaking and what I'm doing are not okay. And understanding that that judgment is not okay either. So like, that woman writing that on that post like she never commented back and i really hope that maybe she thought twice about what she had said you know and i would say like go to your like i feel like i'm maybe sounding extreme go to your bible but like a lot can be ha we go to books for everything else why would we not go to this book to help no, us be a better our, human that's our that's our manual that's our that's our life manual yeah but a lot of people you know unfortunately don't look at it that way um but it is. Uh, you can open up the Bible to just about any page and find something that's uh, applicable or uh, that you can you can read and digest Google and apply. We go to Google how to make sourdough. To your, yeah. <laughs> we go to Google for this. We go to Instagram yeah. and look at this hashtag. That's we go right. to this for this. When you're feeling a certain feeling that you don't want to feel, do you just ignore it? Do you just not acknowledge it? Do you justify it in your head, the feeling that you're feeling, even though you know it's not okay? The part about accountability, and I said, I'm one of the most accountable people I know. First mm. of all, you don't know where I stand on the spectrum. Very much libertarian at that point. Like, I'm the most accountable person I know. I stand for accountability. I go, but at the same time, like, you know certain feelings and certain things you say aren't correct. We do know that. And you have to hold yourself accountable to those feelings and those actions. And a part about being an adult is, like, acknowledging a problem and fixing it. Not acknowledging a problem and make an excuse for it, mm. right? So, like, the people are like, I am the way I am. I'm sorry about it. Okay, well, that's very childish of you to say. Right. Understanding that you have an issue. And now the next step to resolving it is correcting said issue or said response. You know what you said was wrong. How can I correct it? Well, my advice would be, you know, obviously faith background, but, like, acknowledge the problem. How do you fix that? Well, the Bible's a great way, too. For me and my my chapter of life, this is where I'm going towards. Yeah. But um, a part of being an adult and being accountable. You want to talk accountability? I can talk accountability all day. Let's be accountable, but let's not be harsh. You know, you can't, like, there's, don't use a word to your, like, to your agenda. Right. Right. And well, that's that's a big thing that's happened. Yeah. Nowadays. Anything the, that fits your agenda. Re redefining what words mean, tolerance and some of these other things. But yeah. we can go down that rabbit hole yeah, another day. Ultimately, um, it, it's, it's how we are treating other people. And I think we we all realize from when we're little, little kids, the right way and the wrong way to to treat people. Yeah. 
way, you know, and ways to handle our emotions. The only thing that we're truly in control of is our response or our reaction to things. We can't control other people, but we can certainly control our response to something. And we're responsible for, for good controlling or for bad. it. And there's a lot of people right now that have completely just let control thrown it to the they just the say curb. whatever they want to say without yes, any sort through, of like understanding of a repercussion or yes. just caring that there's a repercussion. Yeah. Put something out there and then a few months later saying the opposite yeah. and we're like, but you remember it. Like you can't just ignore that. In what world does account- accountability not work, right? Mm-hmm. Where again, that word at its base scenario, it's like you can't just do and say whatever you want to do and expect that for every action, there's always, yeah. you know. A reaction. Mm-hmm. There's always a consequence to what is said, what is done, what is made, what is, you know, like everything has a consequence in it. And I think, you know, we can't go, even though you can be so angry with what's going on right now, the worst thing you can do is be the complete opposite without reason and understanding and compassion. It's like, yeah, you want to go so far to the right. Well, you did this and, blah, 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 and you're doing this. So we need to do this. Okay, well, that's really extreme too. Yeah. At, like, s- at some point, someone needs to just stop and say, "You know what? This yeah. this has gotten out of control. This yes. is this has gone down the wrong." Would people path, acting like children way. who were not yes. like sat not, down and like children not getting their way? Yes, that, that's what adults Throwing are. temper tantrums. Yes. When my sister and I would fight, my dad, my dad's such a level-headed person, sit us down. We're going to figure this out in the middle. Let's go. We're going to talk like, we're going to figure it out. We're going to be responsible. You are arguing about this. You're arguing about this. I'm just not going to let you keep arguing, doing whatever you want to do and hurting Mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Like we need to be, I mean, we have a lot of children running our country at this point, you know, and making decisions and running based off of motion, not logic. That's right. When you run based off of motion, you get what's happening right now. The results that we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah, Emotion doesn't necessarily mean that like, yeah, it may feel good inside, but it doesn't really play out that way. We need uh, we need a uniter and then a divider. And unfortunately, yes. the sides have been so polarized. And, and I get it. And we could go on and on. But I, I'm very thankful that you've gotten to the place where you're where you're at. Um, and it just had a natural way of uh, of, of getting there. Um, it's it's a good feeling. I know for all of us that are here that. That there was a small part played there by people and just um it just it just it feels good that the way that we're conducting ourselves and the way that we're treating people that it's felt by others um when we you know did that live event not that long ago for the for the tryouts that people felt something wow there's something different in here like you guys got a cool vibe it mm-hmm. just feels right it feels good and it's nice that other people pick up on that and it's just because i think there's just a genuine desire for um to help other people and be in service of others and you come in here you felt cared for yeah you know somebody's yeah. expecting to see you and it's not like well maybe they show up maybe they don't it's like hey are you okay is everything okay yeah, that's right. like you know running i'm like yep yeah, just stop for a breakfast. okay no problem just yeah. just making sure you're okay like yeah. you walk in here and it's like a sense of like ah, i feel at home mm-hmm. you know and that's why i said whenever i came on for you i'm like i enjoy being here i know i'm gonna that's have right. fun i know i'm gonna learn something i know i'm gonna laugh and then we're gonna have you know like this conversation that conversation we're that's gonna right. have fun at the end of the day but it's like it's it is. It's a very special place it is yeah. to be here at the compound. And I think that is, you know, obviously to do with you and Mike and building the team and Jared and Steve coming in. Yeah. And, you know, it's just such a solid foundation, you know, from Sam in the front door. Like, yeah. Hello. Just so yeah. glad. Hello. Yeah. It's just very welcoming. And again, like I said, it's, there's the faith in the background, but you guys have never, I mean, in the years that I've been here. Yeah. Nobody's ever pushed anything on me no, nobody's ever was, talked about anything else uncomfortable. Face. nothing's ever in my there, face yeah. it's just kind of like if you want to talk here it is so there's the background like me to say i'm going to start an only fans for my feet everybody was like okay sure if that's what you want to do and i'm like you know what i really don't think i should exploit people's like you know <laughs> their fetishes it's kind of weird it's kind of creepy and i feel like it's not very like godly of me to do that <laughs> and it doesn't really feel right on the inside right because it was like months that i'm talking about this right and i never did it i'm like i never fruition i'm like i had a plan <laughs> this is what's gonna be but something right. inside me was right. like yeah, it but, doesn't feel quite right. but i came in and i talked about it, i joke with you guys and you guys like okay here we go but inside you're probably like that's probably not what she should do 
but nobody ever told me that. That's right. <laughs> we had to let you come up, come, come to the conclusion come to the myself. Conclusion yeah. on your own. And then That's I did. Right. That's right. Well, yeah, everybody out. was like, "Thank God, we're so proud of you." Yes. And I'm like, "This is how you guys really well okay? Done. Well, thanks for being so supportive. Like, you're <laughs> like, well, you do or you don't. We're going to support you either way. That's but right. <laughs> as long as you're not hurting yourself, exactly. You know, yeah, right in front of us. <laughs> well, I appreciate you making the time for coming in and your very first podcast. This will go down as our, I think, our longest of <laughs> all time. No, but the good thing is we can break these up. So okay. it doesn't have to be one long one. It can be two long or three medium yeah. length. So, uh, but it's been a lot of fun because, you know, in doing this, I get to know you a little bit better and our audience and people following us for years get to know you better. And I'm, I'm sure there's a crossover with people that listen to the podcast that also watch YouTube. Yeah. Or if, if, if anything, now they're very curious about you <laughs> and they will go to watch Coach Ashley videos on both of our YouTube channels. Uh, actually, all three of them because uh, the Strong by Design podcast has its own YouTube channel as well. So this has been great. A lot of fun. I'm sure you're starving. Probably time for lunch. You know what? I had, a, I had a good hearty protein breakfast. Oh, you did? From okay. So Chick-fil-A. you're in good shape. You're in I good got shape. some eggs and chicken in me. If anything, good. I have to go to the restroom because yes. I'm drinking this here it. Celsius. I know, it. I know it. I know. I don't think this, this is certainly the longest I've sat talking. Sorry. You know, without, no, without, but but it, but it's good. Oh, I knew getting into this. I I'm know. Like, you, I, got, I was I like, come on, Chris. You know, you know I can talk about anything That's for right. any min- right. amount of time. That's right. And I feel like I didn't even touch on like my bodybuilding years, right? No, I'm like, oh my God, no, I totally you forgot that no, part. We, we talked about it. I mean, I went pretty far, we, but we hit never on, made it. We hit on all the things I wanted to. Yeah, but okay, good. I think it was a lot of fun overall. And um, I just want to say thank you to the listeners for, uh, again, being uh, followers of the Strong by Design podcast. If this was a, a new one for you, then you get to go back and binge listen to hundreds of past episodes. We've had the podcast now over five years, so there's a lot of uh, past episodes for you to go back and listen to and continue to enjoy. I will ask you one thing. If you would share this episode or past episodes with a friend or family member or, or a co-worker, anyone in your life that you feel could be uh, touched or moved in a, a positive direction, we would just, uh, you know, we just love that. We, we love organically when the show gets shared uh, because there was a message in an episode that uh, helped you in some way and you can then help someone else with that same message. So thanks in advance for, for sharing. And we'll be back next week as always here as a new episode releases weekly on Wednesday mornings at 6 a.m. We love you and God bless. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.